part two of the Komsapat Pass covers the section from the second to the seventh kilometer. If you intend driving this road, it's important to watch part one first, which contains the Google Earth orientation clips, as well as other important safety and tourism information. This section of the road is mainly level and undulates gently through the forests, only to rise at a fairly stiff gradient towards the seventh kilometer. The early foresters lived off the land and wax to make candles was obtained from boiling the berries and branches of the wax berry. Natural soaps were made from crushing and boiling the seeds of the Cape chestnut or rubbing the crushed leaves of the Cape holly together with a little water. You should visit the indigenous nursery at the Dipvala Forest Station to learn more about the many uses of the indigenous flora and purchase a few specimens to take home with you. Caracals are not often seen in the forest as they are solitary animals and predominantly nocturnal. During daylight hours, their remarkable ability to conceal themselves in the most meager cover leads to them being completely overlooked. The blue dacre is the smallest antelope found in southern Africa. They approach open grassy areas with great caution and because they are shy and timid, they run for cover at the first sign of danger. They are usually found singly and are active in the early morning and after dark. The Cape Clawless Otter is widely distributed on the continent where there is suitable aquatic habitat. They are as much at home in salt as in fresh water. Their main period of activity is early morning and late afternoon. Approximately 35 to 40 species of the so-called typical forest birds are found here. Bird species include the Nisneluri, Narina trogon, olive thrush, chorister robin, cape robin and starred robins. Due to poor visibility in the forest vegetation, the birds in the forest have rather loud penetrating calls. Sound takes priority over sight as a means of communication. More than 280 species of birds are listed in and around Neisner. The ardent bird watcher will have the opportunity to spot the unique, rare and endemic bird species. No commentary on the Neisner forests would be complete without mentioning the Neisner elephants. These elephants are the last of the most southern elephants on the African continent and the only free-ranging elephants in South Africa. In 1876, it was estimated that 400 of these giants roamed the forests of Neisner. By 1969, a survey showed only 10 elephants, but a 1994 survey showed only one cow remaining. South African National Parks continues to determine the exact Neisner elephant population through ongoing surveys. In complete contrast, the Neisner dwarf chameleon is a species of dwarf chameleon that is endemic to South Africa. As is the case with most chameleons, its tongue is twice the length of its body, which gives the chameleon the ability to catch insects some distance away. These masters of camouflage can change color to not only suit their surrounding environment, but also when they get excited, when defending territory, and when courting females. Their greatest predators are birds and snakes, and especially the boomslang. Their scientific name, Bradypodion, means slow foot, which describes their slow walk. They climb high into the forest canopy during the day to bask and then sleep in the center of ferns at night, quailing their prehensile tails to look like fern fronds. The Garden Root National Park is a unique conservation model in South Africa. It's not a single block of conserved land, instead it's a daring new experiment in conservation. A mosaic of protected areas sprawled along the country's southeastern coast is all gathered under one management plan. It's a park that exists in total symbiosis with human settlement, infrastructure and activities within its boundaries, incorporating humanity not as an intruder but another species in nature's intricate web. At the 6.2 km mark, the forest canopy suddenly gives way to clear skies as the road reaches the first of the false summits. This only lasts for a few hundred meters before the road plunges back into the forests. Be sure to watch part 3 of this video series on Komsapat, which covers the final 5 kilometers, as well as the Grootrai picnic site and the Tablans forest walk, where there are toilet facilities and drinking water available.